welcome to all of you shiksha 360 and today in this session basically we will discuss very very important session that is regarding the basal norms okay? we will discuss different mcqs basically different important information or different facts on the basal norms so let's start our discussion we have mcq session with discussion basically set number 26 that is basal norms question number 361 to 384 so let's start our discussion Question number 361 basically present on your screens now. Basal three recommendations, clear basically basal three recommendations shall be completely implemented by clear basal three implementation basically shall be completely Im implemented by clear. First question here is regarding that. Wait a minute. Yes. Basal three recommendations shall be completely implemented in India by 31st March 2018, 31st March 2019, 31st March 2017, 31st March 2016. Clear? 31st March 2016. Clear? So what is the correct answer? Clear? They can be implemented by 31st March 2019. Clear? So option number B is the answer here. These types of questions you will directly find in the examination. Clear? And well basal guidelines clear started from india basically basal guidelines starting implemented in india basal guidelines started implementation in india It is basically started from 1st of April 2013. Clear? It is basically started from 1st of April 2013 and basically they have to be implemented. Clear? Or basically they have to be implemented in India basically till 31st March 2019. Clear? But this is to basically little bit, I think, it has to be basically little bit extended basically due to the COVID restrictions clear or due to some other restrictions basically by the later on basically due to the COVID also I think it has to be extended clear it has been extended clear it has been extended like other basically we have already discussed under chapter number 5 15 clear other guidelines or other has to be also extended so it has to be extended till 31st March 2020 clear it has been extended i think till 31st march 2020 okay so please remember that clear in the question if they have given not any option 2020 so basically you have to go with that option clear you have to go with that option clear this is a general clear later on basically due to some other external reasons they have to be extended that clear basically they have to be extended that okay now move to the Next question and question number 362 under basal three, the risk weight for capital charge for credit risk on the basis of the standardized approach clear on the basis of the standardized approach does the match in which of the following clear in under basal three, the risk weightage for capital charge for credit risk on the basis of standardized approach it does not match in respect of which of the following clear basically where it will not match so basically both fund based and non fund based claims on the central government it is to be zero percent central government granted claims zero percent the claims on ecgc basically zero percent question number sorry option number d state government granted claims is zero percent clear state government granted claims basically zero percent clear so basically they are asking basically what is the risk weightage clear so what is the risk weightage here clear so the correct answer here is to be option number d clear basically option number d does not match that is state government grant is claim zero percent this does not match clear? this does not match here clear so option number d is the correct answer clear option number d is the correct answer here now move to the next question under basal three the risk weightage is for capital charge clear under basal three the risk weightage is for capital charge for credit risk 
on the basis of the standardized approach clear on the best basis of the standardized approach basically for exposure to commercial real estate is clear basically for exposure to commercial real estate is clear so what is the risk weightage clear under the standardized approach basically under which sector basically for the commercial real estate is to be first option is 20% second option is 50% third option is 100% fourth option is 150% clear so under the commercial real estate it is to basically 150% clear it is to be 150% clear so this one is the answer clear these are some of the facts just you have to remember that clear these are some of the important facts just you have to remember that clear now move to the next question so basically this one i have shown you basically overall capital which we have discussed under the chapter number 23 clear this regulatory capital and percentage to risk weighted assets clear percentage to risk weighted assets clear first one here is to basically minimum common equity tire one ratio clear minimum common equity tire one ratio it is to 5.5 percent capital conservation buffer clear capital conservation buffer that is comprised of common equity it is to be basically 2.5 percent minimum common equity tire one ratio clear plus capital conservation buffer clear that is this one combination of both that is 5.5 plus 2.5 that is basically 8.0 additional tire one capital that is 1.5 okay minimum tire one capital clear that is this one this one first tire one equity ratio plus additional tire one clear first plus four it is to be seven that is 1.5 plus 5.5 clear so basically sometimes they are asking basically minimum tire one capital ratio that is 1.5 5.5 7.0 tire two capital here it is to be two so minimum total capital ratio seven plus two it is to be nine so minimum total capital ratio plus capital conservation buffer clear this is capital con conservation buffer clear so nine plus 1.5 clear total it comes out to be 11.5 clear 11.5 clear that is overall it comes out to basically 11.5 clear hope it is clear to all of you clear this one is a capital conservation buffer clear capital conservation buffer 2.5 so 9 plus 2.5 here it is to be 11.5 see see one thing but just you have to remember all these points clear just you have to remember this table clear nothing difficult just if you are going to remember properly or understand properly you are able to answer all the questions clear sometimes basically you will get case study on this type of concept also clear case study on this type of concept also so ccb question was there in the abm exam clear capital conservation buffer clear this question you will find in the abm exam i think on last week clear the exam held on basically on 27th sorry 26th of june clear this question 2.5 percent it is asked in the abm examination clear so basically you will get these types of question clear either in the abm or bfm clear very very important for the examination point of view now move to the next question so banks are required to maintain a minimum capital conservation buffer of clear banks are required to maintain a minimum capital conservation buffer of 1%, 2%, 2.5% or 5%. Clear. So what is the correct answer here? So basically capital conservation buffer of clear, it is to be 2.5%. So this one is our answer. That is option number C is the answer 2.5%. This one is the answer. Okay, the 2.5% clear. So this one is the answer here. Now move to the next question, question number 365. Liquidity coverage ratio clear. This is basically you will get in the Bissell also in the chapter number 15 also clear. Liquidity coverage ratio takes into account the survival for an acute stress scenario lasting for dash days. Clear liquidity coverage ratio takes into account the survival for an acute stress scenario lasting for dash days, one day, 15 days, 30 days, 45 days. So the correct answer here is to basically lasting for 30 days. Clear. So this one is the answer here. Clear lasting for 30 days. This one is the answer here. Clear liquidity coverage ratio. Please go through the chapter number 15 MCQs videos. Clear. I have already shared that is very, very important. I have included all the important question in that chapter. Clear in that video. So please go through that so that you are able to clear the 
questions basically asked in the examination from that. Now move to the next question, question number 366. Dash this, liquidity coverage ratio is intended to promote short-term resilience to potential liquidity disruptions. Clear, is intended to promote short-term resilience to potential liquidity disruptions. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year, clear. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year, clear. So what is the correct answer? That is 30 days, clear. 30 days liquidity coverage ratio is intended to promote short-term resilience to potential liquidity disruptions. Now move to the next question, question number 367. As per the RBI recent guidelines, clear as per the RBI recent guidelines, the Indian banks without overseas present should migrate to Basel II guidelines by latest by 31st of March 2007, 31st of March 2009, 31st of March 2008, 31st of March 2010, clear? They have to, as per the recent RBA guidelines, clear as per the recent RBA guidelines, basically Indian banks without overseas, clear basically Indian banks without overseas presence, clear should migrate to. Please tell fast what is the correct answer regarding the Bissell 2. First March 2007, 2009, 2008, 2010. Clear. So, according to me, clear whatever the answer basically I have that is it is to basically 31st March 2009. Clear 31st March 2009. It is the answer 8. Clear. It is the answer 8. Clear. If there is any updation under that, you can also inform me. I will check once again. Clear. So, according to me, it is basically the option number B is the answer. Clear. That is 31st March 2009. Clear. So, please remember that. And for basically Vessel 3, we have already discussed. Clear Vessel 3, we have already discussed. Now move to the AMA. AMA, Advanced Measure Approach. Clear Advanced Measure Approach. Already discussed these approaches. Measure dash under Vessel 2 approach. Clear Advanced Measurement Approach. First of all, you have to tell that basically this approach, it is basically for the which is clear. That is the question here. Clear. This is the definitely you will get these types of question in the examination. Clear. This is the most important question for the examination point of view. Clear? Advanced measurement approach. Measure, measure dash under basal to approach. Credit risk, market risk, operational risk, liquidity risk. Clear? So what is the correct answer? That is advanced measurement approach. Basically to measure the operational risk. Clear? It is measure the operational risk. Next one is IMA. Internal models approach. Clear. Internal. Models approach clear. It is basically for which risk clear internals model approach. It is basically for which risk that is for the market risk clear basically for the market risk. TSA approach. The standardized approach. Okay, so you have to remember all these things clear. You have to remember all these things clear. Now, next one here that is under market discipline pillar three clear banks. You will find this type of thing basically under the chapter number six also clear chapter number six also clear. Sorry, 26, not six chapter number 26 under market discipline under pillar three banks are required to make number disclosures efforts are in progress to harmonize these disclosures with the, some international standards. What are they? Clear, basically, what are they? First one is international disclosure standards, international financial reporting standards, international basal disclosures and standards. D option is none of the above. Clear, basically, D option is none of the above. Clear, so what is the correct answer here? That is option number B. That is international financial reporting standards. Clear, international financial reporting standards. Clear. So this one is the answer here. Clear. This one is the answer here. Clear under market discipline under pillar three. Banks are required to make number disclosures. Clear under which standard that is international financial reporting standard. This one is the answer. Clear. This one is the answer. Clear. So basically for Basel 3, please go through this video. Is clear. MCQ's video, you are able to understand the points more clearly. Clear. Then basically you can go through it as any PDF or any other thing. Clear. Next question is risk weightage. For risk weight for credit risk under standardized approach is computed based on clear risk weight for credit risk 
under standardized approach is computed based on first one is external credit rating second one is internal credit rating third one is rbi rating fourth option is none of the above clear fourth option is none of the above clear so risk weight for credit risk under standardized approach is computed basically based on the external credit rating internal credit rating rbi rating none of the above clear so the correct answer here is to be option number a that is external credit rating clear that is the external credit rating clear so this one is the correct answer here that is external credit rating now move to the next question question number 371 All scheduled commercial banks, excluding local area banks and regional roller banks, operating in India, shall maintain a minimum total capital of nine percent of total risk weighted assets. So this will be further divided into different components as under clear. Like first one is here, tier one capital must be at least dash of risk weighted assets as on an ongoing basis. Clear ongoing basis. Thus, within the tier one capital. It is admitted can be maximum at one point five percent of RWS. Clear. So basically five point five point one point five here they are given. So basically, tier one capital basically must be at least what is the value here? Five point five seven percent, nine percent, eleven point five percent. Clear. So we have already discussed that it is to be basically at least five point five percent. Clear. Five at least five point five percent of risk weighted assets. Clear. At least five point five percent of the risk weighted assets. As on the ongoing basis, clear. As on the ongoing basis, clear. So option number A is the correct answer. That is five point five percent, clear. Five point five percent of risk weighted assets. Now move to the next question. Question number three hundred seventy two. The counter cyclical buffer in Basel three capital adequacy regulation, clear. The counter cyclical buffer in Basel three capital adequacy regulation, clear. So basically, what is the role of the counter cyclical buffer here? Is not currently implemented in India. Basically. Second one is it encourages banks to hold less regulatory capital than the minimum requirements. Is zero percent of the risk weighted assets may result in the restructuring of the bank that does not comply. Clear may result in the restructuring of the bank basically that does not comply. Clear. So what is the role? So can anyone tell basically what is the role of the Counter cyclical buffer. Clear. What is the role of the counter cyclical buffer? Please comment fast in the comment section. What is the role of the counter cyclical buffer? Counter cyclical buffer. Basically, what it does? Basically, it places a restriction on the bank. Clear. Counter cyclical buffer. Basically, what it does? Basically, it places a restriction on the bank. Clear. It places basically a restriction on the bank. Clear. Sometimes basically bank will face issues or basically they are lending more. Clear. So at that time basically. Counter cyclical buffer basically helps the banks clear for the restrictions clear. Yes, portion to be kept aside basically for the good times clear. So basically, capital the counter cyclical buffer in Basel three capital adequacy ratio. It is not currently implemented in India. Basically, guidelines have to be issued clear. Basically, guidelines have to be issued here regarding that clear. So may result in the restructuring of the bank that does not comply, or it is zero percent of the risk weighted assets, or encourages banks to hold less regulatory capital than the minimum requirements. Clear. So option we can go with the option number this one. Okay. Now move to the next question. Question number three seventy three. R B implemented the Basel three recommendation in India, basically with the effect from clear. R B implemented the Basel three recommendation, basically in India, basically with effect from. First of January twenty thirteen, thirty first of March twenty thirteen, first of April twenty thirteen, thirtieth September twenty thirteen. Clear? We have already discussed the correct answer is to be option number C. That is first of April twenty thirteen. Clear? First of April twenty thirteen. Clear? So option number C is the correct answer here. Now move to the next question. Question number three seventy four. By how much the tier one equity capital? Clear? By how much the tier one equity capital? Included the capital conservation buffer is increased under the Basel three compared with the tier one equity capital required requirement under Basel one and Basel two. Clear compared with the tier one equity capital requirement under Basel one and Basel two. Clear. So first one is basically it has increased from two to seven percent, two point five to eight percent, three percent to nine percent, or three point five to ten percent. Clear three point five to Ten percent clear. So no, we know that basically tier one equity capital, including the capital conservation buffer, clear. So it is to be basically five point five. 
you have i will show you here 5.5 plus 2.5 clear it becomes 8 clear it becomes 8 clear so basically it has to be enhanced to including the capital conservation buffer comprised of the common equity so basically it has enhanced to 8% clear it has enhanced to 8% clear it has enhanced to 8% clear including the capital conservation buffer clear including the capital conservation buffer clear next question is reserve bank of india has decided that the banks may use the ratings of the following domestic credit rating agency basically for the purpose of risk weighting their claims under corporate exposure basically for what basically for the capital adequacy purposes clear basically for the capital adequacy purposes clear so which one of the rating basically they have to be recognized clear which of the one of the rating agencies clear which one of the rating agencies basically they have to first one is basically smira smira is to be covered under that or not yes inform merics valuation and ratings private limited clear inform merik values and rating private limited that is basically from june 2017 clear this one is true this one is true credit debit analysis and research limited clear credit debit analysis and research limited clear it is to basically credit analysis and research limited clear not debit clear not debit it is to basically credit analysis and research limited clear due to that this one is wrong fourth one is brickwork rating india's private limited that is brickwork clear so a b and d is to be correct here so option number c is the answer clear option number c is the answer a b and d is to be correct here so under that basically there are some other first one is a crisil ikra clear you have to go through with that also clear crisil ikra next question number 376 the basel 2 accord effective at year and 2007 in the india clear the basel 2 accord effective at clear the basel 2 accord basically effective at year and 2007 in the india first one is includes provisions clear basically it includes provisions covering minimum capital requirements basically for the credit market and interest rate risk second one is basically stresses the regulatory supervisory process clear stresses the regulatory supervisory process by requiring regulators to be more involved clear by requiring regulators to be more involved in evaluating the bank's specific risk profile and environment third one here is to basically requires only banks on the regulatory problem bank list to disclose publicly the degree and depth of problem issues as well as their capital adequacy clear option number d is b and c only clear so the correct answer that is the basel 2 accord effective at the year and 2007 in the india is option number d is the correct answer that is b and c only clear that is b and c only clear now move to the next question that is basically local bank has the following balance sheet basically that is in the millions and has no off balance sheet activities clear so what is the basically cet risk based ratio clear cet basically risk based ratio clear just basically we have to calculate what is the cet risk based ratio clear so what is cet cet basically stands for common equity common equity tier 1 ratio clear so how we can calculate that is is to basically common equity tier 1 capital upon clear common equity tier 1 capital upon credit risk risk weighted assets in plus market risk into risk weighted assets plus operational risk into risk weighted assets clear so basically we have to multiply it clear basically we have to multiply it clear under that there is no discussion regarding the additional tier 1 capital clear sometimes basically you will get 80 80 is basically that is additional tier 1 capital clear 81 that is additional tier 1 capital okay so under the cet 1 tier 1 capital clear under the common equity tier 1 capital which of the following factors we have to include here clear which of the following factors we have to include here so under that basically we have to include the common stock plus retained earning clear under the tier 1 capital clear under the tier 1 capital you have gone through chapter number 23 under the tier 1 capital that is under the tier 1 it is to basically common stock and retained earnings clear common stock and retained earnings clear so we have to calculate this one clear we have to calculate this one clear for the risk weighted clear this one for the cash it is to be multiplied basically by the zero 
zero for the treasury bill it is two also and for the basically residential mortgage clear the risk weighted is to basically 0 0.5 and for the business loan it is to be one clear so basically what is the answer zero here comes out to be zero here's 600 into 0.5 that is 300 plus 430 so the total risk this one comes out to be 730 upon 95 sorry 45 plus 40 upon 730 that is 85 upon 730 so please calculate fast basically 85 upon 730 it comes out to be what 85 divided by 730 it comes out to basically 11.64 11.644 percent clear so this one is the answer comes out to clear so what is the cet common equity tire one capital risk based asset ratio the risk based ratio it is to be basically comes out to be 11.644 percent clear just you have to first of all how we can calculate common equity tire one capital ratio that is it is to comes out to common equity tire one capital under that we have this one common stock plus retained earnings clear you have to remember that under which components it is to be present under which clear tire one tire two all we have covered under the chapter number 23 okay upon credit risk into risk weighted assets into market risk into risk weighted assets operational risk into risk weighted assets clear so all they have specially mentioned clear in the examination you will get basically what is the risk weighted center like this one we have okay now move to the next question question number 378 in determining the risk weighted of loans secured against commercial real estate, clear basically secured against commercial real estate, national regulators have discretion to allow 50% risk weight for certain loans that meet particular requirements. Although the Basel II Accord set out that loans secured against commercial real estate have a dash risk weightage, clear, have a dash risk weightage, clear, a long risk. How much is the risk weightage? Clear how much, much is the risk weightage? 10%, 20%, 100%, 120%, 150%. 10%, 50%, 100%, 150%. Clear this one is the answer. I think we have already discussed LCR. LCR, it is a requirement under Basel 3 where by banks are requirement. Where banks are required to hold an amount of high quality liquid asset that is HQLS that enough to find cash outflows basically for 15 days 30 days 60 days 90 days clear the correct answer here is to basically 30 days clear the correct answer here is to be 30 days so as per the basel 3 implementation in india minimum tire one capital must be dash of risk weighted assets as an ongoing basis clear so minimum tire one clear minimum tire one it is to be 5.5 plus 1.5 clear 5.5 basically 1.5 clear here they are not saying that basically you have to include capital conservation buffer clear here they are not saying that you have to include capital conservation buffer clear so it is to basically 5.5 plus additional tire one that is 1.5 clear so seven percent it is to be the answer so option number b is the answer here clear that is seven percent now move to the next question question number 381 very straightforward question based, based on the above table or given table the bank has sufficient tire one capital according to the basal three standards so tire one standard including capital conservation buffer it is 8.5 percent and tire one plus tire two including capital conservation buffer it is to be 10.5 percent clear it is to be capital conservation buffer it is to be 10.5 percent clear so here basically from the given table basically just we have to check that does the bank does the bank have sufficient tire one capital according to the basal three standards clear as per they have given so how we can check tire one capital we know that basically CET1, just capital here that is 150 upon total risk weighted asset 1590, clear upon 1590, clear. So please tell fast, 120 up divided by 1590. So it comes out to basically 7.547, clear 7.547, clear. So what is the correct answer, clear? So it is to basically tire. So tire, basically it has sufficient tire one capital according to the Basel three. No, it has to be no here, clear. So it, they are including the capital conservation buffer. It is to be 8.5, but here we will get only 
seven point five clear. But here we will get only seven point five percent clear. Seven point five percent. Okay. So now move to the next question. Question number three hundred eighty two. All scheduled commercial banks, excluding local area banks and RRB, operating in India shall maintain a minimum total capital of nine percent of total risk weighted assets. This will be further divided into different components. As for now, the question is: total capital that is tier one capital plus tier two capital must be at least dash of risk weighted assets as on an ongoing basis. Tier two capital must be admitted. Or can be admitted maximum up to clear tier two capital can be max admitted maximum up to tier two capital it is maximum up to two percent clear so basically tier one capital plus tier two capital that is seven plus two it is to be nine percent clear seven plus two it is to be nine percent this is tier okay so option number C is the answer here clear option number C is the answer okay. so in this session basically we have to discuss up to this much point. Hope you are able to understand some of the important points regarding the Basel norms. Clear so some of the important points regarding the Basel norm. I will take one more session on the Basel norm so that you will able to understand more questions. Clear. Just you have to go through. I will request you once again go through the chapter number twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. Clear. All are interlinked. Clear. All are interlinked. Basically, all the questions. Basically, today we have discussed some of the basic terms. And rest you will find in the chapter number twenty three also clear chapter number twenty three also and under the chapter number ten also clear because all are interrelated with each other clear all topics are interrelated with each other clear so thanks to all of you for joining this discussion.